Well, good morning. It is Saturday morning. You could be at home in bed. You could be with your families, but instead you decided to come here, which tells me that you are on a mission, that you are here with purpose, and that you are ready to get down with business. So let's begin. 19, go ahead. Let's clap. Let's do it. Thank you all for having me here today. 19 years ago, I first came to Mongolia as a United States Peace Corps volunteer. They took me to the city of Zonmod, which is just south of here, and as a volunteer, we had to go meet Mongolian families and do what is called a community needs assessment. That's where we asked families, if you could change one thing in your community, what would it be? Now, as an American, I saw many things. The roads weren't paved, the hot water wasn't there, the cold water was sporadic, there was medical waste behind the primary school. People were doing their laundry in the streams. I saw many things that I would change. But when I met with these 15 different families on an individual basis, they all said the same thing. If they could change one thing, it would be more channels on cable TV. So I'm here today to talk with you if my slides work, are we on? Maybe you can just flip the first slide on. Well, anyway, I'm here today to talk to you about perspective, to share with you a perspective. I know that TEDx is about sharing ideas, but I want to share with you a perspective, and then all of you are going to come up with the ideas. So here's a slide for perspective for you. The topic today is about envisioning the future of Mongolia. And I tie the future of Mongolia in with your destinies. And I see an extremely bright future for Mongolia, but only if you are willing to fight for it. Now, I want to introduce you to someone. This is Democracy Dinosaur. Democracy Dinosaur is big. He is large, and he sits in the parliament building. And he's so big that he takes up most of the seats in parliament. Not all of them, but most of them. And Democracy Dinosaur, he doesn't belong to a political party. He's not DP or MP or M MPRP or whatever you have here. He's none of those. He's a mentality. And Democracy Dinosaur in the 1990s gave you perhaps the best gift you will ever receive in your life. In the 1990s, Democracy Dinosaur decided that Mongolia would be a democracy, it would be a free market economy, and it would have an open private sector. So I'm going to pick on Democracy Dinosaur today, but we can never forget that hard choice that Democracy Dinosaur made and the gift he gave to all of us. And as time went by, Democracy Dinosaur, his era was the 1990s. And we get into the 2000s, and as we started to get to 2011, 2012, Democracy Dinosaur started to things grow around him and get bigger. The private sector was booming. People were becoming richer. People were becoming successful. And as a dinosaur, he needs to eat. And he wasn't being able to eat because everything was growing around him. So he came up with an idea, and he sold that idea to you. And that idea was that he was going to make Mongolia even better. He said, all oh, these foreigners, they're stealing from Mongolia. They're taking everything from Mongolia. Oh, these Mongolians, these are some bad Mongolians over here. They're taking from you. I'm going to make Mongolia even better. And like you, I was shocked. I said, he's going to make Mongolia even better? Well, it's fantastic right now. We have record GDP, record foreign direct investment. Our international reputation is fantastic. Unemployment is low. Things are going fantastic. But, but he has an idea. He's going to make it even better. And like all of you, we celebrated. We said, it's going to get even better. And then reality set in. And we said, maybe the policies and the legislation of Democracy Dinosaur were really to feed Democracy Dinosaur and not do what he was saying. Unemployment in Mongolia, we have the highest unemployment in, in all of Asia. The annual household income took a nosedive. And if we look at the uh, real GDP, you'll see 2019, these are IMF numbers, 2019 we're at 6%, nowhere near the 17% we had when the private sector was driving things. But 2019, 6% respectable, but we're getting ready to fall back down again. And we'll gradually climb back up. But these numbers don't take into account the delays that will happen with OT and that are coming. And this could be quite depressing. But I really see this as a door opening. The door is opening to your destiny and your opportunities. 
There's an old saying that a smooth sea never makes a skilled sailor. We develop and we grow and become who we are meant to be when there is friction in life. We don't want life to be plain and boring and everything given to us. We need friction in order to achieve our destinies. So I want to talk to you a little bit about winning and what it really means to win. And who better to address winning than Chinggis Han? Now, for 19 years, I have been hearing how great Chinggis Han is. Oh, he bore a fantastic crown on his head. Oh, Chinggis Han, he had the largest army. He was rich. He was powerful. Everybody wants to be driving down the street in their Lexus 570 like Chinggis Han. Everybody wants to be driving towards that crown, towards Zeisen, their multi-million dollar apartment like Chinggis Han. Everybody wants to be coming back from the airport with their designer bags and their AirPods and iPods. Oh, give me that crown like Chinggis Han. Put my face on the money like Chinggis Han. Give me a throne in Sukhbatter Square like Chinggis Han. I want that crown. But in 19 years, I never hear people talk about how much this man suffered to get that crown. Everybody wants to be given that crown, and when they're not given that crown, they get angry and they try to steal it. You can become a member of parliament, but you are not Chinggis Han. You can climb the highest mountain and watch the sunrise, but you are not Chinggis Han. But what do you mean? My father has to be poisoned and die for me to wear that crown? Well, nobody to told me that. What do you mean my culture is going to kick me out and leave me on the step to die? Well, 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 wait a minute. Nobody, nobody explained that to me. My wife is going to be kidnapped? What? The future queen of Mongolia raped in order for me to get that crown? Oh, please don't make me walk across that to get to the crown. Just, just bring that to me. Just pick it up and bring the crown over to me. I don't want to walk through all that pain. Do you think Chinggis Han had a perspective on how the political alignments and culture were working for him during his time? Do you think he sits on the throne in Sukhbatter Square now as the pollution washes over him and he says, uh, I, I, we'll see what these guys can do. You know, your children are dying. Your grandparents are dying. Your parents are dying. We're, we're, we're all dying here in the pollution, but, but we'll see what these guys can do. Or do you think Chinggis Han would stand up and say, if they haven't done it in the past 30 years, what makes you think they're going to do it in the next 10? Because when Chinggis Han was pushing forward for his destiny, for his vision of what the future of Mongolia would look like, the forces got stronger and they pushed back against him. He had to kill the thing that he loved the most. He desired and wanted and loved and wanted to share a new Mongolia with his best friend, his trusted friend, but he had to kill his best friend in order to move forward. Is there something maybe that you love or a desire that you have that maybe you have to kill in order to move forward? Maybe you thought you would be here in life right now, but you're only here. You know, I, I went to all the right schools. I got all the right grades. Everybody told me Mongolia is going to be bright and, and, and beautiful and it should be here, but I'm only here. And maybe that space in between there causes you frustration and anxiety and anger. Maybe you need to kill that thing you desire and get back in the fight. So Chinggis Han had to kill the thing he loved most. Let me try it out over here. As Chinggis Han pushed forward, the forces pushed back against him even stronger, and he had to confront his greatest fears. The shamans came to him. They said, we control heaven. Let's sit down and discuss the future. And it's one of the few times when you're reading about Chinggis Han that you can tell that this man is actually scared. He is in fear for his life. And they're sitting there, and they're probably saying, well, just a little bit of this SME fund. That's how this works. You know, you give that to us. And 50% and of the procurement contracts to this state-owned enterprise. That's, that's how this always works. So, so we know how the future is going to be, uh, Chinggis. And Chinggis sat there in fear. And then he stood up, and he broke their backs and left them to die in a gare. And he said, that is not my destiny. That might be yours, but I have something bigger planned for Mongolia. And he went for it. 
Chinggis Khan was an outsider. He was pushed outside of his culture, so he created his own. And this person was born under attack. He was attacked, attacked, attacked. Thousands of times he was attacked, and it was through all of these attacks that he sharpened his skills, and Timujin was able to become Chinggis Khan. He never wanted the crown. He had something better planned, but the crown came with it. Now, we are at a crossroads in Mongolia, and there are several doors and openings, but there is only one door that leads to your destiny. And I keep hearing from Mongolians, for 19 years I've heard, Mongolia will change, our future will be better when the next generation takes over. And then I heard, well, it's going to take two generations now. And just last week I heard a Mongolian tell me, well, it's going to take three more generations before Mongolia really changes. And I am here today to tell you that the generation has already arrived. That is you. You are here. You have the talent and the skill and the ability to make this place great. And I know as you stick your head out and you are trying to fight, there's something big and hard and strong pushing against you, a dinosaur. But you cannot sit around waiting for someone to bring you, someone to gift you. You cannot wait for democracy dinosaur to give you. You cannot wait for three generations later to give you something you already have inside of you. And that is the ability to change this place and to succeed. And I've been confused for 19 years because so many Mongolians want to leave Mongolia. There is great nationalism on one side saying we love this place, and then on the other side everybody wants to leave. And I understand economic refugees. I understand people go to South Korea to work on the factory floor because Democracy Dinosaur killed all the jobs here in the private sector and has low-paying jobs to pay you here in the government. I understand that, but I can't understand the mentality of everybody looking to leave. And then it dawned upon me why people want to leave, and that is because your mentality. Your generation is so far ahead of what Ulaanbaatar has to offer you. We may have coffee shops, we may have movie theaters and some characteristics of a city that supports your potential, but this city is not built for you. It is the stomping grounds of Democracy Dinosaur. It is the feeding grounds of Democracy Dinosaur. Let's pave this road, I'll take 20% off the top. Let's do some drainage systems here that will fall apart, 20% off the top. You want your land, here's your land rights, eh, come on, feed me, I need something to eat. You wanna build your building, okay, I need a small cut right here. This feeds Democracy Dinosaur. But as you stand up and you reach for your destiny, I think you will realize that everything will start changing around you. This city will become a city of optimism and opportunity, the thing that everyone is looking for. Now, in the meantime, Democracy Dinosaur has been busy. Democracy Dinosaur says that uh, he likes the private sector and that the private sector is the engine of growth and how Mongolia will move forward. But really what he's saying is, I'm hungry. It's not about the private sector. It's about feeding me. In 2008, Energy Resources, a Mongolian company, had an international lending consortium ready to finance the railroad from here to China. In 2008, we still do not have that. And it was killed because democracy, dinosaurs, pride, personal interest, and politics. CHP5 which was supposed to help solve some of the air pollution problems here. Again, international lending consortium saying, we're ready to finance this. Private sector saying we're ready to build this. But Democracy Dinosaur killed it because of politics, pride, and personal interest. Tavan Togoy, the original licenses, belonged to a group of Mongolians. If they had those licenses, they would develop that into a world-class mine, bringing royalties, taxes, jobs, training. They would bring pride to Mongolia. But Democracy Dinosaur killed it. And then there is OT. OT is probably the greatest project for this nation. It is probably the greatest project to benefit the people of Mongolia. But Democracy Dinosaur is angry because he can't tell them to procure from his companies. He can't tell them where they're going to put his money. And he chases it down with some of the SME fund. He helps that. He's not interested in the private sector. He's interested in growing some of his companies because he has to eat. 
So I think by now you're probably starting to see that Democracy Dinosaur is very good at destroying things, but not particularly good at creating things. And in fact, while he destroys them, he tries to pick up the pieces to eat, a concession here, a license there, and the things he can't pick up, well, he's going to keep other people from eating them, so they go undeveloped. Now, Democracy Dinosaur just came up with a new idea recently, because he's hungry. He's, he's trashed the private sector, he's stomped on it, and now he needs to eat again. He's constantly hungry. And so he, he has this new idea, he has this seed. He has to plant something to grow so he can eat and continue to feed himself. And so he's trying to sell you another idea, the state-owned enterprise. I, I know, this is a bit shocking. Here's Democracy Dinosaur who declared a democracy in Mongolia and said we're going to have a free market economy which is going to be driven by an open private sector. Uh, but all of a sudden now he is saying, oh no, let's go back in time, back in time where I was able to eat and where I was the king of the world. Let me take Mongolia back in time to the state-owned enterprise because state-owned enterprises are notorious for corruption where I can feed. State-owned enterprise are notorious for procuring to me or this party or that party where I can feed. And now it's up to you to decide whether or not Democracy Dinosaur, who is looking to the past to bring back the past instead of looking to the future, shares your destiny. Or are you going to say, Democracy Dinosaur, that's your destiny. You take that into extinction with you. We've got our own plans and our own destiny for this country. When you walk by Sukhbader Square and Chinggis Khan is looking at you, do you think he is looking at you with disappointment? Maybe saying, I don't even know who you people are anymore. I don't think so. I think that he is looking at each and every one of you, dead set in the eyes, and he's saying, you know what to do. Thank you.